What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 82 of Autodesk Fusion. Today we're looking at specifically is our once we're done with our piece, how do we take it and present it to the real world or the public view? And you could take a screenshot of this. However, it's not very professional looking. So where do we go from there? I'm going to click on this little drop down menu right here on the top left and then click on render. When you get into render, this is an environment for you to either take a video of your design and process or to take a screenshot and things like that. So very specifically, I'm going to look at how can we take a very detailed script shot, screenshot or capture image and then what is kind of the shorter route that I would recommend for a uh, first year engineering student's digital portfolio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on scene settings, this little ball in the corner. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the camera settings for our design. Now what we can do is we can click on a solid color and then we can change whatever that color is. So if we want to, we can make it green or we can slide over this, make it red. And it's kind of whatever you're looking for to take care of with your object. However, on top of solid colors, what we can do is also choose an environment. Now I'm gonna stick with this environment because it helps us see some of those different uh, features that I'm gonna be showing here in a second. All right, so we got brightness, which you can make it darker and make it brighter. Pretty easy to figure that out. And we got a background environment. On top of that, you have this position. Now, when I click on this position, it allows me to change where this is at. So if we have, we're doing this plaza feature, do I want it in the center of a square, do I want it on this concrete, kind of up to you on changing position. But then on top of that, you can also change how big it is. So we can say that our automata box right here is going to be probably the size of a house with this scale. And that's just because when you present it, your client or the public doesn't really have straight immediate access to your drawing file or your specifications. So by throwing it into an environment and giving something to scale it from, people can have a general idea of how big it's supposed to be. And so clearly my automata box is not gonna be that big. So I'm gonna scale it down to where probably about there just so that my clients can understand that this is a pretty small thing and uh, it's not uh, particularly, uh, I don't want to say you can't, it's easy to miscommunicate, miscommunicate as a large item. So we're gonna go ahead and call that done. So I'm gonna deselect position and then we're good. All right, now we're on the ground. What can we do for ground? Now, by default, this may not be selected. Uh, and what this ground plane does is it says, okay, with my texture, I want it to be on what we call the ground of the image. So when I was moving it along, what you notice is that it looked like it was on the ground. And you can go ahead and tinker with these images, uh, images like what these settings do. And But one thing I really, really like is that ground plane, it just puts it on the ground, easy to see. Next one we got is the camera. So most things we've been building has been an orthographic pro projection so we as the engineers can understand it better. However, real world is perspective. And so this allows it to see what does our design actually look more like in the real world. Um, and so for your capture image, since this is for the general public, probably more likely to keep in perspective. These other ones you can tinker around with uh, on when you look at different environments and different settings within those environments. But one thing I really recommend you don't do is you save as default here. Because what it'll do is it'll capture this as my default. And uh, if you are, if your settings are really wacky, then it'll save it as that. And then every time you have to go in, and then you have to retweak it again. So do not click this save button. I really, really would not recommend it. All right. So we're here now. What do we do next? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm now going to rotate this around to find a good spot for my my image. So I'm going to go ahead and just make all of these my joints invisible that way I can see. Okay, here's my automata box. Here's about the scale of what I'm looking for. 
Now let's go ahead and click on capture image. This is the really quick way to, to get an image. And then so what I'm going to do is for this uh, window size, I'm going to make, if it's going to be something along the lines of like a square image with uh, on your digital portfolio, a one to one ratio is really what you're looking for. Of course, more pixels mean more definition. And if you're going to be something that's more wide scale or wide screen, then you're going to choose the uh, aspect ratio, you know, 16 pixels wide by nine pixels high ratio that this is for more of a full screen image. So since I'm going to be using some of my digital portfolio and I'm going to have some text or specifically some links inside of it, I'm going to keep this as a 512 by 512. It just makes a nice square image and then we click OK. When this prompts up, you can save it as a PNG, JPEG, or TIFF file. Now, most of the time, PNG and JPEG works really well for what we're going to be doing. I just use JPEG as default. That way, um, I don't know, it just tends to work a little bit better for me. So I'm going to click on Save It as a JPEG. It's automatically going to save to my computer and not in the cloud. Uh, we can have it saved to the cloud, but by having it saved to the computer, when I open this up and in my downloads, we notice I now have this image. If you notice, it's the exact same screenshot or angle of where my viewpoint was at. So when you take this screenshot here, we'll take it of that moment. Okay, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna let you have fun with those other canvas settings when it comes to all right, if we want to make a high resolution, very specific image with very specific details, you can kind of tinker with that, but this is all we need to know to put it on our Google site portfolio. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know, and I will see you on the next video. Later.